So y'all, we are here at Survivor Series War Games, and we're kicking it off with a bang. It's the Raw Women's Champion, the EST of WWE, Bianca Belair's team, taking on the former Raw Women's Champion, the man, Becky Lynch's team. It's team versus team in a War Games match, and this is about to go crazy because y'all, today we're doing stuff different. Usually in the pay-per-views, we fit them all together, but this is a part one, part two scenario. We're kicking it off with a War Games match. Then we will be seeing Bobby Lashley taking on LA Knight for the Intercontinental Championship. We will be seeing Gunther taking on Seth Rollins, taking on AJ Styles for the US title. And then in the main event, in our quote-unquote main event, Liv Morgan will be taking on Rhea Ripley. And I know this qualification match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And tune in for part two if you want to see the rest of the matches. Part 2 is going to have amazing matches like another War Games match and even a steel cage match. But here comes the leader of damage control. It's the role model Bailey. The people that are on Bianca Belair's team is Charlotte Flair, Shanti Blackheart, and Raquel Rodriguez. Where Becky Lynch's team has the whole damage control. And this is Bailey's first ever pay-per-view. So can she make it mean something? Especially that she's starting off with the Raw Women's Champion. Bailey has never been in the war games before, let alone starting off with the Raw Women's Champion. This is going to be crazy for Bailey. But y'all, if y'all are ready, let's get into this amazing women's war games match. I wonder who's going to have the advantage. And this War Games match is officially underway. Bianca Belair with the spear out of nowhere. And this is the first ever pay-per-view for a lot of women. I believe this is Charlotte's first ever pay-per-view. This might be Raquel's first ever pay-per-view. First ever pay-per-view for Shotzi. Oh my goodness. It's a lot going on. But y'all, it's a whole lot of chaos. Bailey with a whole bunch of punches and dragging her down by her hair. You know that's what Bianca loves. Don't mess with the EST's hair. And now Bailey with the exploder. Now Bailey waiting for Bianca to get up to run at her with the knee. Oh my gosh, Bailey is absolutely ruthless. Tries to go for another kick. Bianca with the reversal, and now she's gonna grab her. And the EST showing off. Oh, she was about to show off her strength, but Bailey with the reversal. Oh snap! It's looking like damage control, and Becky Lynch's team is the one that has the advantage. And speaking of Becky Lynch, here she comes down to the ring. Now Bailey throwing the EST and gonna jump on her slip her head into the mat. Golly. <laughs> Becky Lynch now setting up the table and Bianca Miller lifting up Bailey looking to do a couple squats with it. Imagine she just suplexes Bailey right through the table. Oh no, right next to it. And Bianca now with the strike right to the face of Becky. Oh gosh, the numbers is taking advantage of Bianca Belair. And speaking of Bianca suplexing Bailey to the table, Bailey just suplexed Bianca to the table and now going to throw her to the ground. And now the next woman coming out is Charlotte Flair. That's a part of Bianca's team. And you better come quick, Charlotte, because Bianca's getting beaten up. Speaking of coming quick, Charlotte does not get a weapon or anything. She just goes straight into the ring. Oh my goodness. As soon as you see Bailey and Becky dominating, now it's... It looks like Charlotte and Bianca are turning this thing upside down, clothesline now a backbreaker. Oh my goodness, who is going to be the next person in this ring right now? Charlotte Flair with a suplex. And now Charlotte Flair from the top row with the double axe handle and Bianca Belair with the bulldog. Now Bailey with the suplex and Bianca with the glam slam. Oh my goodness, the next woman in this match will have to be Dakota Kai. I believe Bailey also just hit a rose play. It's a lot going on right now. Dakota Kai from Damage Control coming into the ring and she's also bringing to the table just like Becky. Bianca Belair is the EST but it looks like the numbers game is catching up on her right now and it looked like Becky Lynch tried to go for a low down drop kick but it gets reversed and now Bailey tries to slam down Charlotte Flair but Charlotte went the reversal and oh my gosh Bianca just keeps on getting tossed. And now Charlotte with the natural selection on Bailey. And now all these ladies in this one ring. And it seems like Shanti Blackheart is the next lady to enter this match. Oh my goodness. Shanti got a whole sledgehammer. Oh gosh, what is this girl looking to do? Gonna hit Bailey with the sledgehammer. Hit the total with the sledgehammer. And Becky Lynch from the top. But 
she just splats on the ground. Oh my goodness. It's a whole lot going on right now. Whole lot of back and forth in Dakota with the monkey flip. Charlotte Flair now out of nowhere with the low blow on Dakota Kai. And now Shanti trying to go after Becky Lynch, but Becky with the reversal. Now Shanti with the reversal. And now a tornado DDT. A lot of chaos going on in the ring, but Shanti Blackheart so Suplex through the table, and now here comes the last member of Becky Lynch's team. It's EO Sky. Johnson all the way up to the top, looking for a splash down on Dakota Kai. Cross body. Oh my goodness. Shotzi is just that ballsy to jump from the top of the cell structure. Oh my goodness. And now Bianca Belair looking to make Bailey tap out. Will Bailey tap out? It won't even matter to be honest. And oh, Becky Lynch with the man. Charlotte Flair. Yo, I just realized where is EO Sky? Raquel Rodriguez is about to come out, and EO Sky is not even in this ring yet. We just got Bailey, we got Becky, we got Bianca, Dakota, Shanti, and Charlotte. But where? Oh my gosh! EO Sky is glitching in the corner. That is what she's been doing this whole entire time. As Raquel Rodriguez brings in the last table of this match, and Raquel is the last woman in this match, EO Sky glitches all the way to the ring. Oh my goodness, EO, girl, what have you been doing? Oh my gosh, y'all, we should have expected this. EO Sky climbing up to the top of the cell. It seems like everyone is just jumping from the top. EO jumping down on Raquel Rodriguez. Raquel literally just got into the second ring. Oh my goodness. Oh, pinfall already, but Shanti breaks it up. Well, yeah, now that all the women are in the ring, you can go for a pin and Raquel Rodriguez with the tree slam. Okay, Raquel, I see you. What else does Raquel have in store? Kick right to the gut and she might be looking to make EO Sky tap out. Becky just standing there. The submission barely even was able to start. Becky just slamming there making sure she breaks up the submission and now Bianca Belair just got hit with the Hurricane Ronda and what is Charlotte Flair doing? I swear to you every woman in this match has been jumping from the top of the South Charlotte. I would not be surprised if you went for the pin after that. Jumping all the way down on Bailey like that. Girl, you should have went for the Pit. Oh god, Charlotte, you're in big trouble because you got hit with a belly to belly. Goes for the pin one and the two, but a kick out from Charlotte Flair. Oh my goodness. And oh, look, Bianca Belair hits the KOD on Becky Lynch. Bianca tries to go for a pin, but Dakota breaks it up. And now Shotzi with the top rope elbow drop on Bailey. Goes for the pin, and Charlotte hits the natural selection and just like that. Bianca Belair's team gets the big victory. Y'all, this proves that not every match has to end in a finisher. Shotzi got the big victory for the team. So congratulations, Shotzi. At the end of the day, this was the Raw Women's Champion, Bianca Belair's team. But Shotzi did get the victory. Oh, my goodness. All these women did great in this War Games match. Do I have to say which one stood out? Because I have to say that Charlotte did stand stand out in this match. She dove out from the top. She hit multiple finishers. Charlotte Flair was just going off at some point. This was an amazing women's workies match. Hope you guys can agree with me, but now I wonder what's next for the Raw Women's title direction. Y'all would just have to continue watching and see, but now let's move on to LA Knight taking on Bobby Lashley for the Intercontinental Championship. Here comes a man that is super over IRL and could be super over in this universe mode if he wins the Intercontinental Championship. It's LA Knight. Y'all, we just moved on from one amazing War Games match, but now let's move on to one amazing title match. Let's see if LA Knight will be able to defeat Bobby Lashley for the Intercontinental Championship. And the only reason why LA Knight is getting this title opportunity is because he won a number one contenders match, defeating The Miz and Tommaso Ciampa. And now here comes the almighty Bobby Lashley.
Ashley, the Intercontinental Champion. And believe it or not, this is the first time that Bobby Lashley is defending his Intercontinental title at a pay-per-view. He's already defended it twice already against Ricochet and Kevin Owens. But this is the first time at a pay-per-view. And speaking of Kevin Owens, if you want to see more amazing matches like this, I advise y'all to tune into part two. We will be seeing Drew McIntyre take on Kevin Owens in the steel cage match for the Universal title, triple threat, tornado tag match, and a war games match, including the WWE champion Roman Reigns. But this rivalry has had so much build to it. I can't wait to get into the match. Could this be the first time that LA Knight wins a title on the main roster, or will the almighty Bobby Lashley retain and make it to the next pay-per-view day one? And this Intercontinental title match is officially underway, but Bobby Lashley with a devastating clothesline, and now with a powerbomb that's gonna slam down LA Knight. Yo, Bobby is starting this match off strong, absolutely taking out LA Knight, and just gonna slam him to the ground. Oh my goodness, and what else is like? Lashley have a story doesn't matter because LA Knight went the reversal. Oh wow, LA Knight is a savage, punching the daylights out of Bobby Lashley, now slamming the back of his head into the canvas, and now LA Knight is gonna make sure to drop Bobby Lashley right on the back of his head. LA Knight now tries to go for another move, but Bobby Lashley with the reversal, and now an elevated flatliner slamming him down, now gonna lift him up with the power stream, oh my goodness, power slam. Bobby Lashley now gonna lift up LA Knight, but he's not looking for no regular suplex. He is gonna let LA Knight's blood rush right to his head and then slam him down with a suplex. Oh my goodness, but LA Knight gets up right away. But Bobby Lashley was prepared to bring him right back down. And now Bobby Lashley gonna lift up LA, but LA with the reversal and close line of him right into the turnbuckles. And now storm after storm after storm after storm really just stomping Bobby. Lashley in. Oh my gosh. But Bobby gets up right away. Bobby with the reversal. And now with a one hand slam. This man absolutely slammed down LA Knight. But the strike gets reversed into another strike. Strike right to the face. But the signature gets reversed. And now that gets reversed into a neck breaker. Whole lot of back and forth. But LA Knight is just going to slam him down after that. Oh my goodness. I love what LA Knight does that slam. And now punch right to the face. LA Knight is actually able to get off his signature this time this is how he became number one contender will he become champion the same way one two but a kick out from bobby all snapping now lashley gets up right away gonna slam him down with a bailey to belly turning la inside out and now gonna lift him up with brute strength and a running power slam oh snap bobby lashley charging it up he's looking for the hurt lock but la nice son reversed it and now LA Knight looking for his finisher but Bobby reversed that too they just reversing each other's stuff but LA Knight manages to connect with his finisher the second time oh my goodness are we seeing a new intercontinental champion no we're not somehow Bobby Lashley is still fighting he wants to hold on to that title LA trying to go for another finisher it got reversed right into a hard lock the hard lock is cinched in it is locked in and it forces LA Knight to tap out. LA Knight was fighting for a little bit, but oh my goodness. After making him tap out, just tossed the man to the floor. All disrespect. Bobby Lashley does not care. He just retained his Intercontinental title. That was a short but sweet match. I really liked the Intercontinental title match. And at certain moments, I really thought that LA Knight was gonna walk out with the title. But still, your almighty Intercontinental champion is Bobby. Bill Ashley, congratulations. But now, let's move on to our U.S. title match. It's AJ Styles taking on Seth freaking Rollins, taking on the current Intercontinental Champion, Gunther. This all started at the last pay-per-view when we saw Gunther taking on Seth Rollins for the U.S. Championship when Seth Rollins was the U.S. Champion. And Gunther dethroned Seth Rollins for the U.S. Championship at Hell in a Cell. And ever since, Seth Rollins obviously wants his rematch for the U.S. title. And AJ Styles got involved in this rivalry when he just kept beating on them and picking on them every single week. You know, AJ Styles did lose to Roman. 
Roman Reigns at Hell in a Cell. So if AJ Styles can't go for the WWE title, I see that now he's trying to go for the US title. But will he be successful? I mean, he was already unsuccessful against Roman. Will he be unsuccessful in this scenario too? You never know because look at AJ Styles. This man is phenomenal. And now here comes the two-time United States champion. It's Seth freaking Rollins. Seth freaking Rollins is on a pay-per-view streak right now. A pay-per-view streak of five. He's been on every single pay-per-view, not including the first one, which was Money in the Bank. And most people who are on a pay-per-view streak are usually champions who defend their title every pay-per-view. But only two out of the five pay-per-views that Seth Rollins has been on, he has walked in as champion. Maybe he can walk out of this pay-per-view as champion. You never know. It's a triple threat match. The champion does not have to be pinned to lose the U.S. title. And Seth Rollins has been mainly focusing on the U.S. title. Maybe he'll move on to bigger and better things soon. And now here comes the ring general. It's Gunther. Oh, my goodness. Just last week on Monday Night Raw, AJ Styles had a one-on-one -on -one match against Mustafa Ali. And after that match, Gunther smashed him right in the face with the U.S. title. Gunther is a dominant U.S. champion, but this is his first ever title defense, so we're really gonna see if he's dominant or not. Gunther could really be running Monday Night Raw right now, or running Friday Night SmackDown, because a draft is coming up soon, and champions are eligible. The draft is after day one, and day one is the next pay-per-view coming up, so champions, if you wanna stay on one brand, you're not safe anymore. You can get drafted, too. The U.S. title has been very hot potato lately. I don't know. I can't guarantee that Gunther's going to hold on to the title, especially because it's a triple threat match. Anyone can pin anyone to walk out with this prestigious title. And this triple threat United States title match is officially underway with Gunther just launching Seth Rollins right to the ground, but AJ going to bring down Gunther. And that's the thing with these triple threat matches. There's a whole lot of chaos going on and AJ was going all, but Seth Rollins with the reversal. And now AJ get a hit with a devastating power bomb. And now Seth Rollins with the combo strike after strike. And oh my goodness, rolling elbow. And then dive over the top rope right on Gunther. Seth Rollins go off or whatever. I see you, but AJ moved out of the way. But that doesn't stop Seth Rollins from going off. Seth Rollins is showing why he is a two-time U.S. champion, slamming him down with the electric chair slam. But AJ gets up right away and rolling fist right to Gunther. And now AJ with the burning hammer. These two men are going back and forth. And now Seth Rollins with the Falcon's arrow. Going to slam down AJ Styles. And Seth Rollins going up to the top rope, bro. Seth Rollins got this lightning ball of energy from the top rope with the Phoenix Blast right onto the back of AJ Styles. But Gunther with the sledgehammer strike right to the gut and goes for the pin right after that looking to retain the title but a kick out at one and now Gunther with the uppercut right to the back of the head of Seth Rollins but now he gets a steel chair right to the back of his head and oh my goodness Seth Rollins gets a steel chair to the back of his head as well oh my goodness AJ is going off right now and he decides to lock in the calf crusher on the US champion will that force him to tap out no it looks like Gunther gets out of it very quickly. Oh no, Seth Rollins has the sledgehammer. He hits Gunther with it. Now AJ Styles with a springboard splash. Oh my goodness. But now Gunther's gonna grab him. And now Gunther's gonna throw him into the ropes. But it don't matter because AJ gives him a neck breaker. And now AJ Styles grabbing him and hitting him with a brain. Oh, I thought it was a brain buster. But it got reversed with the clothesline. Now is he looking for a brain buster? Oh no, he's looking for a neck breaker right on Seth Rollins. And Gunther got the sledgehammer. But oh! AJ brings him down with the snapmare. Gunther now with the reversal and now gonna give AJ Styles a snapmare. Top into a kick right to the chest. Seth Rollins now gonna grab AJ Styles and Seth and Gunther gonna team up together with a double punch but Gunther just ends that alliance real quick. The US champion locks in his submission. Will he make Seth Rollins tap out? No he won't because AJ Styles right there to break it up and oh fair AJ Styles looking for a Styles clash Oh my goodness, one out of his three finishers goes for the pin one and a two, but a kick out from Gunther. That was a 
close call. We could have seen a new U.S. champion double candlestick strike right to Seth Rollins. Goes for the pin. Is this it? One and the two, but Gunther breaks it up. We could have seen a new U.S. champion. Oh, my goodness. AJ going off right now with the combos. Seth Rollins up to the second row with a Phoenix Flash off the second row. This man is crazy. Gunther with the chop. Now going to grab him, but Seth with the reversal. Seth with the kick right to the gun. Oh, God. Seth Rollins looking for a pedigree. This man already has so many finishers. Seth Rollins now has a sledgehammer and he's beating Gunther with it. But AJ comes in real quick and hits him with the DDT. Oh gosh. And AJ Styles charging it up. AJ Styles looking for the phenomenal forearm right on Seth freaking Rollins. Right as Gunther gets up. One, two, and Gunther breaks it up in the nick of time. Gunther, if you were one second too late, you might have been losing your time. He lifts him up. Power bomb as Gunther's finisher. One, two, and a kick out from AJ Styles. AJ hitting his finisher, then Gunther hitting his finisher was crazy. Gunther into the corner, and now AJ into the corner. What is Seth Rollins looking for? He's looking to throw AJ right back into Gunther. Seth was dominating for a little bit. As soon as AJ came in with a candlestick, it all ended. And now Gunther going to lift him up and drop him face first right to the turnbuckle and big boo right to Seth Rollins. Gunther got the sledgehammer and now with a strike right to AJ Styles. Oh my goodness, devastating and now charging up his finisher. Could he retain his title? No, because here comes Seth Rollins to break up the charge. But he gets clothesline right back out of the ring. Drop kicked into the corner. Now AJ Styles getting lifted up to the top rope and Gunther gonna drop AJ Styles down from the top rope. <laughs> I think that's devastating. Look at Seth Rollins just laughing at him. Oh my goodness. And now he locks it in. Gunther locks in his submission signature, but Seth Rollins breaks it up right away. And now Seth Rollins taking one of Gunther's finishers and hits the power bomb on him. One, two, but a kick out. Seth Rollins really stole Gunther's finisher, and now he's going to hit his own finisher. It's the curb stomp right on Gunther. Oh my goodness. But AJ Styles is up. Goes for the pin to and AJ breaks it up. A whole lot of close calls in this match and another burning hammer. The ring general is now the man in control lifting up Seth freaking Rollins and dropping him down right on his face. And now Gunther looking to get the sledgehammer and now just gonna beat AJ Styles with it. Oh my goodness. Multiple strikes after strikes. AJ Styles now getting up. He's grown sick and tired. Now gonna grab him. And now we're looking at AJ Styles and Seth Rollins team up against Gunther. I mean, why not team up against the champion? Oh my goodness. Low blow out of nowhere. But AJ Styles is not done. This man is looking to dive right over the top row. But Gunther moves out the way. AJ Styles now going up to the top rope, looking for the top rope, dive right down onto Gunther. Oh my goodness, Gunther is taking all the pain in this match. And Seth Rollins breaks up the pin before it can really even go through, throwing him into the ropes, bringing him down with a kick right to the chest. While Seth Rollins is getting a steel chair on the outside of the ring, AJ Styles hits a phenomenal forearm right onto Gunther. Oh, wow. And then he gets hit with a steel chair, and he just rolls out of the ring. And now Seth Rollins with the strike after strike. And Gunther can't do nothing because this man is stunned. Seth Rollins now going to throw Gunther into the corner, struck right to the face. And now with the second move, curb stall right into the ring. General goes for the pin, but AJ Styles here in the nick of time just to break it up. AJ Styles now with the bolt stall into the back DDT and now with the side springboard. AJ is going off on Gunther right now. Now with the springboard 450 splash. That's his signature. And now looking for the Styles clash right on Seth Rollins, but doesn't go for the pin on Seth Rollins. He focuses his attention back onto Gunther. Now hits the Styles clash on Gunther as well. Oh my goodness. AJ has been dominating. Could this be it? Could we see a new US champion? Yes, it is possible. AJ Styles is our new United States champion. This United States title has been 
going hot potato, hot potato, hot potato. And it just hopped on AJ freaking Styles. Oh my goodness. I really thought that Gunther was going to walk out with the title since he just won the title at the last pay-per-view. But AJ Styles was very dominant. He hit both of them with the finishers. And he has just pinned Gunther. Gunther has not been pinned in this whole entire universe mode. That was the first ever time that Gunther has ever been pinned, but that was our first new champion of the night. But y'all, let's move on to our quote-unquote main event. It's Liv Morgan taking on Rhea Ripley for the SmackDown Women's Championship in a no-DQ match. The reason why I say quote-unquote main event is because this is only part one out of part two. So if you want to see the rest of Survivor Series War Games, I advise you to tune into part two. But Liv Morgan is already a former SmackDown Women's Champion. She was our first ever SmackDown Women's Champion. But she got cashed in on by Rhea Ripley, who is now our current SmackDown Women's Champion. Can Liv Morgan win? back her title in this no DQ match or will Rhea Ripley remain dominant and retain? I don't know. I really feel as if this match can really go either way. Rhea Ripley has been dominant for so long, but we see people like Guthrie, who's been dominant for so long, get pinned here at this very pay-per-view. Rhea Ripley has never been pinned before, but maybe Liv Morgan can be the one to pin her because these two ladies have never had a one-on-one -on -one match together. They've been in multi-person matches like Triple Threat, Fatal 4-Way, but they've never been in a one-on-one -on -one match. So this match can really go either way, especially because it is no disqualifications. And you also have to think about it. The Judgment Day lost their tag team titles at the last pay-per-view. So maybe this can be the fall of the Judgment Day. First it was Finn and Damian. Next might be Rhea Ripley to lose their titles, but you never know. Let's just watch and see what's going to happen in the SmackDown Women's title no DQ match. This robbery is so deep in between these two women, I would not be surprised if they ripped each other's hair out. But y'all, I hope y'all are ready for this main event. This is the first ever time that women has main evented in this universe mode. Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, no DQ, SmackDown women's title on the line. Let's just get straight into it. And this match is officially underway. This match has so much stakes on the line, especially because this robbery started all the way back at Extreme Rules, when Rhea Ripley cashed in her Miss Money in the Bank briefcase on Liv Morgan, who was SmackDown Women's Champion at the time. But now let's focus in on this match of Rhea Ripley just slamming Liv Morgan to the ground. Liv Morgan goes for a drop kick. Rhea moves out of the way. Now gonna grab her and hit her with a suplex. Rhea Ripley already has her signature, but now Liv Morgan with the reversal. Kick right to the gut. And now a code breaker from Liv Morgan. That's actually Really Liv's signature. She goes for a pin one, but just before the two count, it's a kick out. Rhea gets up right away, and the kick gets reversed, and Liv Morgan goes for a strike, but Liv gets reversed, and a strike right to the back, and oh gosh, Liv Morgan is gonna get her back stomped in by the powerful Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley now with the snap bear, running with the lowdown drop kick. Okay, Rhea, I see you with the move, and now punch right to the face, looking for her signature, but Liv Morgan with the reversal, and that caused her to get slammed right down. Goes for the pin, one in the kick out. Rhea Ripley is gonna continue her dominance when she lifts up Liv Morgan with the tree slam and slams her down. Oh my goodness. And now Rhea Ripley, you can't forget, this is a no DQ match. She gets a bat, but Liv Morgan flying over the top rope. Actually, someone please explain to me how the heck does Liv Morgan already have three finishers in this match and beating the heck out of Rhea Ripley with that bat right now. Liv Morgan looking for another weapon. She decides to pull out a steel chair, hits Rhea Ripley right in the gut with it. Oh my goodness. Still shocked on how she has three finishers somehow and the match kind of just started. And now another steel stair track. Oh, into the head, but I like that, but kick right to the face. These two women are going back and forth. Oh, I'm Livion on the outside. I was not expecting that. Liv Morgan already hit her signature and her finisher. And Rhea Ripley did not hit one yet. Candlestick after candlestick. Liv Morgan, calm down, girl. And these two ladies are finally.
finally getting into the ring. All the chaos, all the weapons, all the nonsense on the outside. And now Rhea Ripley got a table. Oh gosh, a table in this match is going to make it way more crazy. Strike right to the face. And Rhea Ripley this time actually gets to connect with her signature. Oh my goodness, electric chair face first. One, two, but a kick out from Liv. These two women are very much scratching and clawing for an opportunity at that SmackDown Women's Championship. And now Liv Morgan with the reverse. So now gonna grab her and puts her against the ropes. Oh gosh, are we looking for the oblivion ball off the ropes? Oh my gosh, are we looking at a new SmackDown Women's Champion? No, because Rhea with the resiliency. Yo, that was so close. I really thought we were gonna see a new SmackDown Women's Champion after that, but maybe Rhea might just retain after two oblivions and she kicked out and now Liv Morgan throwing her into the fire lit table. Oh my goodness. Liv is trying anything to get her smack that women's championship back. And now what is Liv Morgan going to do? Kick right to the gut. Strike right to the face. And a step up into Gurry. Now going to throw Rhea Ripley right through the fire table. Liv Morgan is absolutely crazy. She really wants that smack that women's championship. Trying everything. Multiple finishers. Multiple weapon strikes. And then throwing Rhea through the table. Oh my goodness, shovel strikes after shovel strikes. Liv Morgan goes for another strike, but Rhea shuts that down right into a riptide. Oh my goodness, riptide, but doesn't do the pin combo. Oh, and Liv Morgan gets up right away. Goes for a close up, but Rhea with the reversal. Lifting her up and dropping her down right face first into the ropes. Oh gosh, and now it's Rhea Ripley's turn. Time to put Liv Morgan to bed. Shovel strike, shovel strike. Oh my goodness. It's the revenge of Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley could end this match anytime soon. She got a finisher and Liv Morgan does not. But oh gosh, Rhea Ripley with the reversal. Is she going to hit the rim tie? No, she's going to throw Liv into the corner. And now we're looking at the reverse. Alabama slam. Rhea Ripley goes for her submission finisher. But Liv Morgan with the reversal. Liv trying to go for a weapon. But Rhea with the reversal. Close line right to the back of the head. And actually locking it in this time. It's the Cloverleaf. Will Rhea Ripley make Liv Morgan tap? This is it. This is where Rhea Ripley retains her SmackDown Women's Championship. Liv Morgan is so close to tapping out, but Liv Morgan somehow manages to fly out of the four-leaf clover and flips over Rhea Ripley right into another Oblivion. That's the third Oblivion on this match. One, two, and the three. We have a new SmackDown Women's Champion, and the Judgment Day has fallen. Oh my goodness. Every single member of the Judgment Day has lost their title. Oh my goodness. Finn Balor, Damian Priest lost the tag team titles, and now Rhea Ripley was just pinned for the first time. Rhea Ripley and Gunther at Survivor Series was just pinned for the first time in this whole entire universe mode. Oh my goodness. Rhea Ripley was really undefeated. She never lost a single match, but she has just lost to Liv freaking Morgan. It is a two-time SmackDown Women's Champion, and you already know at the next pay-per-view day one, we're probably going to see a rematch between Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. You cannot forget there is a draft after day one. Oh my goodness. I hope you guys enjoyed this pay-per-view, but this is not it. We still have three other matches to go. We have a SmackDown Tag Team title match, Universal title match, and a War Games match that will be the Bloodline versus Mr. Money in the Bank, Cody Rhodes, and Raiden RK, bro. So make sure you tune in to part two of Survivor Series. That will be my next video on the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I'm sorry about the crazy posting thing. We're going to get our posting back together. Post it every other day. So I hope you guys are ready for the frequent content. Like and subscribe to the channel every day. And turn those post notifications on if you want to see another upload by me love you guys so much and i got something to surprise you guys in the next video so that is definitely why you should tune into my next video without further ado goodbye